calling all green-fingered gurus and plant killers alike. We got you covered every month with gardening inspiration, hands-on practical advice and fun projects to do. From the latest in plant fashion, growing your own, whether to prune or not to prune, from cover to cover, The Gardener and Detainee magazines have got your back. Get your copy now or subscribe online at thegardener.co.za. Gardening with Tanya is proudly brought to you by Gardena. Realize your gardening dreams. Mayford, grow your own spring flowers. And TanyaFisser.com for all your gardening goodies and supplies. Morning, everybody. Yes, it's well, it's the end of summer. We got a fire going. We had a cracker of a storm last night. Like, I thought God was very cross with me because he was like above our house. There was lightning and thunder. Amy, poor Amy here. My Amy was like, oh, she was like shaking out of her boots. It was, it was crazy. So it was a hectic evening. Anyway, um, it's still really overcast outside. There's an inkling of a bit of rain. And I'm hoping that my harvesting tanks for water are nearly full, I'm hoping, because it really came down last night. I believe down the road they had 12 mills. Um, I've been running around a bit this morning, so I haven't checked how many mills we had, but I'm really hoping, because this, guys, is probably going to be like our last big one before winter, the last rain that's coming through. Um, I know you guys in the Western Cape, you're probably like calling the rain, calling the rain. I know, because that's your time, but but here we, we're waning towards the end. But while sitting and, and uh, waiting for the live to happen, I've got my latest copy of The Gardener. Hot on the shelves, guys. Hot. And it's the beautiful month of May. Why is it a beautiful month? Well, on the cusp of May, so in April, lots of beautiful people's birthdays. My birthday is in May on the 7th. So if you forget, I'll be very, very upset. Very upset. But guys, this is a beautiful issue. And you know it's weird. We look at the pages, we plan these months in advance, we check them, we double check them, we go over, we change the images, we change the text to make sure that it's, it's just on point. And then you kind of forget about it because you're working on the next issue. And then when it arrives, you're like, gosh, I thought that happened months ago, but no, it's only now. And, and in this issue, we've got um, a beautiful hidden gem in Pretoria that, that we reveal to you, um, full of amazing tropical plants. And everybody's gone mental on tropical plants. So go and check that out. We've got a lovely garden um, that Gerald, as old and myself, visited with Chris, uh, which is in the Babadangu Valley. If you don't know where that is, Google it. It's fabulous. The plant life there is amazing. Of course, it's high time for veg and herbs. Like if you haven't succeeded all summer in getting your pak choy to do something or your cabbage to do something, then now's the time to, to really embrace it. Uh, whether it's hanging baskets, whether it's containers, we in this period now that what we do now is going to determine the beauty of our winter and our spring gardens. So, um, and of course, in that all, it's beautiful bulbs. Um, they really are special to me it's and and i guess it's from maybe that hankering after the old that i always go to um in my garden and around in our home and the things that we keep it's it's those things that i yearn for um nostalgia um and bulbs always give me that sense um i love planting them i love the surprise Sometimes, truth be told, I forget what I planted. <laughs> yeah. And it comes up and I'm like, hey, you, who planted you there? <laughs> and I'm like, now that, now that, I mean, when you surprise yourself, you're like, oh, Tanya, you're really losing it. You're really losing it. But anyway, guys, um, I got my coffee. Um, the fire's going. The kids 
are happy. Amy, Rolo, Gracie Child, everybody is really happy and snug. And um, it's misty outside. Sure, I should probably have a, um, what are one of those things called? A glue vine. No, I've got coffee and I promise there's nothing inside it. You want to smell? Yeah, have a smell. No, there's nothing inside. Okay, right. Last sip of coffee before we get going. Mm. Guys, I see there are loads of you online already, whether you are on YouTube or on Facebook. Um, so let's see who's here and say good morning. Um, oh, and there's been a lot going on, actually. Actually, actually, actually. Let's just reverse. This week has been crazy. Okay, so darling brother, my eldest brother, I'm the quiet one. No, true story. I'm the quiet one. <laughs> My grandmother used to call him FM. FM Stereo. Anyway, he's been visiting for the week, um, which has been absolutely amazing. But, but hectic, hectic. Let me tell you, we forget what it's like having people around us all the time. We really do. But anyway, it's been absolutely amazing. Um, some really nice family meetings. Yes, we all have to have family meetings. Um, and a lot of planning going on in the Gardner offices for some exciting events. And for those of you in Cape Town, I hope we can pull it off, guys. Um, but uh, if you're in Cape Town, um, keep an eye out very closely on social media over the next 10 days because we have got something up our sleeve. I can't reveal it yet. But I can't wait to see the mountain and I can't wait to see all of you. So, so hang in there. It's coming, guys. It's coming. And you know what? It's time for me to get out. Absolutely. I need to get out. I think I'm heading out cabin fever. Something. I, you, you know that I am mad normally, but, but I think like the vibrations are going even worse now. But anyway, guys, let's see. Oh, Almeida's from Botswana. Good morning. Good morning. Serena, good morning. Um, Kahiso, good morning. Jennifer, good morning. Sharon, Beverly, uh, Kathy from Coxstead. Morning, Kathy. Um, Carol Reynolds, good morning. Marge Mitchell, good morning. Esmeralda, um, Sybil from Durbanville. Durbanville, yeah, 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 yeah. Cape Town, Cape Town, hang on there. Byrne, good morning from Mandini. Maureen, um, shocker of note. Yeah, the storm. Ha! Ha! Oh, that was like, okay. It was like, it was hectic. And you know when the lightning and the thunder, or the thunder and the lightning, oh, that reminds me of the song, Thunder. Okay, but anyway, you know when it's like so close, it's like, yeah, I know, and, and, and my grandmother, so I got to tell you the story, my grandmother, very superstitious, very old fashioned, when there was lightning, we had to open the front door and the back door, no matter the wind, thunder, lightning, rain coming in, doors slamming, we had to open the front door and the back door so that when the lightning came into the house, it could make its way out. Do some of, did some of your parents or grandparents, did, did they have that story? I was like, Gran, Gran, the stuff's going to come in here and strike us dead. Never mind going in the front door and out the back door. It might catch us on the way. You know, but anyway, she'd um, say some expletives, um, expletives before you grandchildren, you kids. Um, just listen to me. But uh, anyway, she was crazy mad. Uh, what a wonderful lady. What an absolute wonderful lady. Um, we've got Carla from Centurion. Um, we've got Miss Cheeky. Oh, hoo -hoo. Miss Cheeky from Sydney, Australia. <laughs> oh, she says she's just planted her daffodils, ranunculus, Dutch irises, and many more. Um, love from Patricia. Oh, man. Um, Sahira Sadek. Happy Earth Day, is it? Oh, happy Earth Day. Oh, happy Earth Day. Oh, that one slipped me. Okay, sorry. Thanks for the reminder. Um, Julia, we slept through the storm. Julia, Julia, Julia. Julia from Peter Maritzburg. Julia Bradford from Peter Maritzburg. You slept through the storm. Hi, Wenna. Wenna, what was in your tea, your, your late night tea before your nightcap? Anyway, hello to you and lots of love. Um, Luke Rousseau, Cheryl, um, Larisha is here. Good morning from Hillcrest. Uh, Bernadette, Sonia, Janet Knight, um, Anne Morris from PE. I saw Wendy. Wendy, our Wendy is on holiday and she sends greetings from PE as well. Um, I hope you're having a fab time, Wins. I really hope you're having a fab time. Sybil, Melissa, um, my goodness, guys, you are all here. Eldo, look at your cushions. They look like mine. They probably are like yours. 
Yeah, I don't know. They're probably from that shop that begins with the mister. Puise. You also shop there? Yeah, we do too. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa, good morning. Carla. Um, all right, guys, you are all here. Love to you all. And thank you for joining us this morning. So um, before we get into it, of course, um, we've got our report back on, uh, on that thing. Yes, that thing where you send in your videos and tell us what you've been doing so we can keep track of you. Um, and more importantly, we can give you a wonderful gift voucher to our online store. And guys, it's called The Dirty Spade. One that's dancing again. Yeah, I'm the only one that's dancing. Guys, you got to get with the program. I want to see you dancing. I love that music. Okay, guys, our runner-up, our runner-up for this week, uh, this week's Dirty Spade. Um, yeah, we had we had some amazing videos. I, I had to reduce it down to two because yeah, it, it was close. But but here we go. Our runner-up drum roll. <laughs> Love the spot. <laughs> Goes to Amina Kadwa. Just doing my weekly uh, maintenance of indoor plants and checking the plants um, for any pruning, watering. Um, I've decided to take Tanya's advice on orchid grow. Uh, it's been some time now with my orchid and it hasn't been, I haven't been very successful in trying to get it to the blue. So we'll be trying out the orchid grow food and uh, hoping to get some results. Well done Amina, um, you certainly are doing it right and that Phalaenopsis of yours looks incredibly healthy. Um, it really does look good, lovely dark green leaves, you're feeding it. You're going to be repotting. You're doing the right stuff, so just keep at it. And I even saw that your green shoot there had been cut just above the node. Yeah, what's a node? That's like where the next shoot's going to come out. So good job. Really, really well done. But guys, for this week, for this week, our winner of the 650 RONT voucher to TanyaFisser.com online shop goes to... Drum roll. Nicolene Janssen van Rensburg, what an amazing video you sent. Take a look, guys. Today is watering day. I let my water sit overnight to get some of that chlorine out. I don't even know if it's effective, but that's what I'm thinking. And then I've tempered it with a bit of boiled water. So I just fill some of my containers up halfway. And then later I will fill the rest with some fertilizer water. For fertilizing, I use my stock is orchid fertilizer and for pest control, I've got some 3% hydrogen peroxide for um, any fungus or anything on the roots, some snail eggs or anything, which I spray when I repot. And I have some alcohol, isopropyl alcohol for me millibugs. After I've wet the roots, I mix a batch of my fertilizer and now I top up my pots and let it soak. Just be aware of the crowns. If you have crown rot and you lose your leaves like this poor fella, I dotted some cinnamon in the cavity. Cinnamon helps with antifungal and antibacterial for the rotting. After a good soak I will drain and let them air outside and I will collect all the water and fertilize and water the rest of my indoor or outdoor plants that are so finicky. I will air these orchids outside to make sure that any roots or Leaves that got wet in the process dries out to prevent stem rot and crown rot. I collected all of this water and fertilizer to 
can now recycle on my ferns and my cactus and my hoya. Well now, I have learned one or two things from your video. I thought it was spectacular. I love the way that you recycle the water. So half it goes in, soaking it all up really nicely, then goes in the food. All of that is then saved. I think it's brilliant. Well-deserved winner. Um, Elmarie, I'm very, very proud of you. Good job, and we can all learn from that. And the fact that you kept them in their pot covers whilst watering them to give them that extra and they can really soak it up. So brilliant. And then you use that for the air plants as well. Yeah, all, all around, all around, all around. So enjoy the shopping. Um, yeah, shop online and shop till your fingers drop. Or what is it? Till they get cramped. I'm not sure. Anyway, guys, today we're talking bulbs. There's this beautiful world fascination. In fact, the fascination of bulbs started many, 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 many years ago before we were even a thought. Were some of us not a thought? Oh, let's not go there. Anyway, um, and it, it was way back in the 1800s. Um, and we go back to the bulb that all of us know most and, and even non-gardeners know this bulb, and that's the tulip. Of course, the tulip back in its day was an ugly little morsel. It really was. Um, and not very pretty at all, but through hybridization, um, things have changed. And, and it's the bulb that most of us want. However, I have to heed caution. Caution that tulip for me, and, and I'm going to say this, and some of you might diss me for this, but for me, a tulip is like the most unimpressive. It's like three days. It like starts like this, and it's a hello, hello. Hello, hello. That's how it opens up during the day. Third day, hello. And it doesn't come back. It stays there. And then the petals fall off. Um, there, there are loads of others for me that are way more bang for your buck um, and that are going to give you loads and loads of colour. So let's talk about planting time, okay? Planting time number one. Oh, by the way, and the tulip in the 18, 1835, I think it was. Think about this, 1835. Yeah, I know, my brain can't even calculate that. It's like... Okay, it's got an error. Control, alt, delete. Okay. A tulip bulb then sold for 21,000 rond. Weird, eh? Wacky. Can you believe it? That amount of money. So that was the tulip mania. People were trading in tulips. It was worth more than gold. It was worth more than diamonds. And then, yeah, a bit like Bitcoin. And the bottom fell out. <laughs> did I say that? Yes, I did. Right. Um, but, you know, tulips... Uh, tulips uh, have, have, are still around, and yes, they are. Remember, you order those online a little bit later because they've got a very short shelf period, a very short shelf life because that little embryo that's inside them, the embryo which contains the flower, as soon as you get them, you've got to plant them. No, get them, go and, and fiddle around and go for a holiday and whatever. No, you get them and you plant them. But the beauty about bulbs, guys, is that for me, they are dead simple. They are foolproof. They really are. Anybody can grow them. Um, and the reason why is this. And, and I showed this to you, I think it was last, last year, in one, of our, one of our bulb experts. But, but this here is a hyacinth. And now, I, I, I love a hyacinth. I mean, look at these here. Look at this beautiful hyacinth. This is, it's quite heavy, so I'm going to... Yo, it's heady. Yo, it is so heady, sweet, beautiful. Look at them. Look, look, look. Opens from the bottom all the way to the top. Now, hyacinth, this, is, this has been grown for indoor conditions. Okay, so it's going to last at least three weeks. Yeah, yeah, at least. Especially if you buy it in bud like that. Don't be scared. Don't buy them. We've had this for already four days. So don't go and buy them when they open like this. You've missed the best part. Buy them when they're still tight like that, even shorter. Because then as soon as you then put them into your home, then you're going to watch the whole growth process. This is one that we've had for a couple of weeks now. And you can see that this little guy, he's sending up one more flower. But like, he's past his sell-by date, okay? Like, he's over cadavers, okay? And we're going to talk about how to take care of that as well. Um, but this, starting like that, okay? And I want to show you why it is so easily. So come in really close here because 
every bulb. If I open this up like this. And what is a bulb? If we have to be really technical, a bulb is a modified stem. Okay, the, the, the plant has developed and has gone through many, many changes to create these big flesh, fleshy scales, which are the storage organs of the plant. And that's where the energy is stored. So it's the energy is stored in here for the next season's growth. So if we open this up here, ha, look here, look here, look here, look here, look here, look here. There. Do you see that little thing in there? That is the flower. That is the flower, guys. Can you see that in there? You can see even there, there are the petals. There they are. That is the flower. So it's here. It's ready. It's good to go. All you got to do is plant it. Plant it. Okay? All right? Nice and easy. And in these bulbs, in this beautiful collection that I've got here, everything is ready to go. So, um, this is a big topic, and, and I have got a lot to get through. So we're going to go through some of the troubleshooting that I generally am aware of and the questions that you ask. Number one, what about moles? Okay, what about moles? Well, yeah, moles. <gasps> I caught a mole the other day. True story. I was sitting, and I'm actually going to show you the garden bed just a little bit later when we venture out into the garden. I was sitting having my coffee, like I always do, on that side of the veranda, and <laughs> I'm not just woken up, okay? So I'm like, I said, that gora is moving. That whole plant is moving. And we're sitting there in the plant. I'm like, wipe my eyes. And I'm not seeing things. That gora is moving. It's like, are you moving? Yes, it's moving. I'm like, okay. I said, babe, babe, there, there. It, there's a mole. I run to the shed. I go and get my little spade grab a truck because it's close by run out there but now i don't want to run on the gravel because i'm going to scare the mole so i go tippy 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 toes and there the girls go kum, kum. <laughs> so i go i put the spade underneath the soil and i lift and i miss him and i'm like don't anyway so i see him moving so i put it underneath and i pick him up and i got him i got him this most beautiful beautiful mole <gasps> He was so gorgeous, he had terribly long, very bad teeth. He needed to see an orthodontist at some point in his life, but parents couldn't afford it. So he's got really, really bad teeth. Um, anyway, we put him in the truck and we have a strict rule in this house. We have a very, very strict rule that no mole will die. So the mole was put into the truck. We put in a bit of soil. He was very upset, very, very upset that I'd taken him away from the gora. I'm like, dude, do you know I planted that about a month ago and now you're just relocating the plant. Um, anyway, so, uh, and the moles get taken. Um, there's a big field um, across the tar road from us over there and the mole goes and gets released. So said mole is over that side and I just hope he stays there but if you do have moles and you're worried about planting because yes bulbs are very yummy for them um, nice storage organs beautiful for them to sink their teeth into we use these and these are actually water plant or they're called air pots now they're used for various um, options and applications um, you can actually use them to plant Put plants in and dunk it into your water feature you can use it for orchids as well but what we do is we dig a hole we put the pot in put the soil in and then we plant the bulbs in here yeah so that when said mole comes along he's like kr, 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 I can't get there okay so that works incredibly well pop along to your local garden center most of them do stock these by now if not tell them Pascal that as a belief for my fro okay and they'll get it for you all right so that's that can I grow bulbs indoors? Well, of course you can. Absolutely, of course you can. There are a few that you can grow indoors, and I am going to touch on that now. We were at our local garden centre the other day, and look what we found. I mean, honestly, an amaryllis, completely out of season. Uh, yeah, amaryllis are meant to be like near Christmas time. But you know, that's what happens. Um, modern technology controlled growing conditions, you can get basically anything to grow. So amaryllis, yes, for later in the year, hyacinths, beautiful for growing indoors. And I'm going to show you just how you can do it. Now, you will notice that I haven't mentioned the D word, daffodils. Now, guys, if you go searching for daffodils right now, you are not going to find them. Um, daffodils are only arriving in South Africa. 
the end of May, they will be available within the first two weeks of June. So save your pocket money because you're going to want them. Okay, keep an eye out, put your name down, order online, pre-order, whatever you've got to do, but they are only arriving late. A whole long story, I'm not going to go into it, but you've still got time to plant them. So keep space for them. And remember, daffodils are one of those that you can grow indoors as well. One that I love, love, love growing indoors, and it's got the cutest name, are these. Chinkery cheese, chinkery cheese, ornithogalum. And, and guys, we've got some in, in a section of the garden here, and it's such a small little bulb. I mean, look at the size of that. It is small, 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 small. Um, that have been going for probably, they, I think they're on their third year now, um, in between the agapanthus. I keep forgetting that they're there. I oh, know, I oh, know. And I'm like, this patch needs something. And I go digging around and, oh, quickly put it back. But you know, they survive. Um, chinkery cheese are wonderful cut flowers. And that's the beauty with bulbs. It's hard to decide, do I cut you? Do I put you in a vase? Or do I just leave you in the garden? Um, we have a, a very strict rule in this household. Um, very, very strict, and I've got my serious face on now, and that's that bulbs will not be cut. However, however, I, I will walk in the garden and I'll say there were five buds here. There were five daffodils flowering. One's gone. Where's it gone? Lo and behold, I go and look in the lounge in some floral arrangement that my other half has done, and there's my daffodil bulb, knee and knee. But anyway, anyway, guys, it's an ongoing battle, and I'm sure that you have that too. Um, yeah, we're about to divide the garden in half. Um, but anyway, never mind, never mind, never mind. So, those are the ones that you can grow indoors. How do you do it? It's very, very easy, guys, and I want to show you very quickly. So, um, We've shown this before. This is called Brocatoni. Okay, that's what the bag looks like. Brocatoni pebbles. You get them in all different colors. Green, brown, white, wada, wada, wada. Um, you can also get a similar um, product, which is exactly the same. Have a look here. It's just on a different name. Let me open this up here. And these are basically little clay pellets. Um, this is the brown. They're incredibly light. They absorb water. They're really good for using at the bottom of pots. Um, you can also use them just to aerate good in orchids and great for bulbs, great for bulbs. So let me show you how you do it. Okay, first up, um, you need to soak them because it's clay, it's a terracotta. So what's going to happen is, you're going to see they've changed colour. So look at these, these are the, the dry guys. Have a look at this. Look, see, colour change, they've soaked up the water. They've become darker, they're actually heavier as well, much, much heavier. Why? Because whatever we're going to be planting, we want to make sure that the bulb takes the moisture from the pebbles, not the pebble take the moisture from the bulb. You get it. Okay, so um, very, very simply, you can take um, and use glass because then you can see the roots. You know, it's like, oh, it's like science experiment. So use glass, just take your broccatoni, okay? Pop it in. There we go. Our pre soaked Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Now you could also use just, just clipper for this, huh? some rocks. Um, but I much prefer this. And it looks so elegant. It really does look elegant. So you'll see I've got it just over there, just below. Don't fill it all the way to the top because you'll see what will happen. Okay? And I will be using um, my hyacinth. So where are you? Hyacinth bucket. Remember Mrs. Bouquet? Hello, Mrs. Bouquet, lady of the house speaking. Who remembers that program? Come on, who remembers it? Oh man, what was it? BBC or something with her son Sheridan, who was always wanting to borrow money and her eyebrows. She had the most fabulous eyebrows. Mrs. Bouquet, lady of the house speaking. Uh, come on, who remembers her? Oh, I want to see who remembers Mrs. Bouquet. Oh man, she was a killer. And then they once went on a um, on a sea cruise, and of course her whole outfit was nautical theme. And uh, and when you came there for for um, oh love Mrs. B Mrs. Bucket, yes Mrs. Bucket, Mrs. Bouquet. <laughs> Maureen says I loved her. <laughs> and you know, um, <laughs> I think it was the dentist. 
I think it was the dentist that I used to go to, used to play her on a, on a loop, so it would definitely calm me down before I'd have to go in and have root canal treatment or something. Uh, yeah, Mrs. Bouquet, Mrs. Bouquet. What was the husband called? It was Sheridan was the son. Onslow was, was the brother. Was Onslow her brother, the real common one, who always drank beer and had the big boop? Um, what, what, what was her husband's name? Uh, Keeping Up Appearances, yes, that was the name of the show. Um, I'm trying to remember now. Oh, you see, the man was so henpecked, I can't even remember his name. But anyway, anyway, never mind. Okay, I'll check up here later if one of you can remind me. Okay, so we are going to use some hyacinths in here. You get three hyacinths in a packet. Okay, good to go. Remember, your planting time for these is any time from now up until the end of May 1st, even first two weeks of June. If all else fails... If all else fails and you don't remember a thing from this morning's live, read the instructions. The instructions are here. Read the instructions if all else fails. Okay, so let's just get them open. Richard! Oh, Richard! Yes! That was his name. Richard! And Richard was, I mean, Richard was always like he was on the edge, teetering of a nervous breakdown. Yes, Richard! Thank you, Beverly. Thank you, Lissel. <laughs> Uh, oh, the brother-in-law was Onslow. Yes. Uh, oh, no, no. Okay, you've lost me. <laughs> I think I'm going to go and watch that this afternoon. Okay, anyway. Three, oh, 30 minutes left. Okay, my team is now um, proverbially um, giving me what we call the stock oog in the family. It's like stick to the subject matter, Tanya. Right. So all we do is we take the hyacinth bulb. And remember with bulbs, they generally have one to two sparks, flower sparks. So plant them close, plant them tight, keep them nice and snug. So this part over here, just like an onion of your bulb, is called the base plate. Do you see that? You can act, if you look closely, you can actually even see the roots are starting to push through. That is the base plate. Obviously, the base plate is the bottom. There's your growing tip, your point, and these, this is known as the shoulder of the bulb up here, and underneath it are all the layers of scale. They are called scales, so we take that, we're going to pop one in there, we're going to pop one in here, and you see how I'm just jiggling it around? Jiggle it around so that it gets firm into the brocatoni. All the brocatoni is, is merely something just to home fuss, okay? That's all. Take this little guy, pop him in here. All right, there we go. Then, 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 you take a few more of your brocatoni here, and then you just fill in around, because this is going to hold it. So your roots are going to start growing. They're going to go in between the brocatoni. They're going to hold it up. So when he gets a bit top heavy, he's got the, 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 the little um, clay pellets to hold onto. Look, this guy's already even saying, I'm waking up, guys. I'm waking up. Cooler temperatures make bulbs wake up. Cooler temperatures. The opposite is for the summer bulbs. Warmer temperatures make them wake up. Okay, so in they go. In they go. Okay, we might need two hours for this live. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> okay, so there they are. They're nice, tightly held. Now all that we do is we're going to add some water. Now guys, when you add the water, this is the part where things can go wrong. Okay, this is the only part when things can go wrong. What I want you to do is you don't pour it on top of the bulb, near, you pour it on the side and you're going to watch the water level. This is important. You want to fill it to just below the base plate. There. Just below the base plate. I'm going to get this up really nice and close so Mason can get in here. It is just below the base plate. You do not want to get this bulb all the way up to its neck with water because then it's going to frot, it's going to rot, okay? So really important and all you keep on doing is just keep topping it up, just keep topping it up and in a couple of days it's going to start shooting some roots. Um, up this comes here, out as beautiful green leaves and guys, that's it. <laughs> I mean, come on, that was so easy, that was so, so easy. Um, of course, remember, your bulbs are great in containers. You can even pop them into hanging baskets. You can be a bit of a bit adventurous and even put them into the lawn. Yes, you can make little fairy rings coming up. But let's go through some of the bulbs that are available this season um, that we are able to use. Let me just get my rose back on here. 
But whilst we're talking about this, let me touch on, um, on what happens when they are done. So when your bulb is over, okay, like this, the bulb is over, what do I do now? Okay, so I'm going to speed this process up a bit. Um, here are my hyacinths, okay, hyacinth bucket. Um, it is finished flowering. It's still got some green on it. You wait for this green to die back. Don't be impatient. Don't be impatient. Wait for it to die back because now all the energy is going from the green. I just splattered my glasses. I can't even see what I'm doing now. So wait for all the green to die back. And because then what's happening, all the energy is now going back into the bulb. That's where it's going. It's like shoop, back into the bulb for next season. Okay. Then what you would do is let's pretend that this has died back. We take it out. Okay. Dust it off. Get the soil off. Okay. Get the soil off. You would then, once these are dried, you can either leave the dried leaves on or you can prune them off. Okay. And then you would take a paper packet. Okay. Paper bag, not plastic. Paper bag. Pop in some sawdust. Pop your bulbs in there, get them snug, fold it up, and where are you going to put it? In your linen cupboard. Why? It's cool, it's dark, okay, and generally there is a little bit of moisture there. In your linen cupboard. Don't put in the grocery cupboard, someone might like mistake this for an art couple of an A of it, okay? So that's where we keep them, in the linen cupboard, in a paper packet like that. Of course you can name it, you can write the date on it, you can remind yourself what they were in case um, your memory <clears throat> lets you down on that particular day. You know what I'm saying? Because it does with me. Um, and that's how you store your bulbs. Nice and easy, nice and simple. Okay, so let's talk about what we've got out there. Now, my ultimate, ultimate, all-time second favorite. Or is it my first? I don't know. You know, um, when it was my birthday, um, my mom used to always send me a bunch of irises. So I really love irises. Um, whew, don't make me cry. Um, and uh, purple or, or yellow irises are my absolute, absolute favorite. In fact, I've got some in the garden that are still going from her old garden. Um, but Dutch irises are absolutely fantastic. You get them in the purple and you get them in the yellow. You can also get them in the mixed. And I don't mind the mixed. Um, I really don't mind them. Um, they get nice and tall. All right, so you're looking at 30, 40 centimeters. A favorite of mine to underplant. So, yes, when you plant the bulbs, there's like nothing on the soil. So you're going to look at dead soil, like waiting for them to come up, like, hello, knock, 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 anybody home? No. So plant the bulbs, all right, and then you overplant them. And this is where you can have fun. And overplanting with them, one of my ultimate favorites, because they're incredibly tough. They will require as much water as your irises, because your bulbs all your bulbs in the garden you water once a week. Word yellow. Once a week. And don't forget. That's all. Once a week. So, I would sow this. Look, 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 look. Beautiful African daisies. Oh, isn't it nice? Beautiful Namakwaland daisies. Yeah, that's what they are, Namakwaland daisies. So, you would... Use this, put your bulbs down, sow your Namakwaland daisies on top of them, and there you've got this most beautiful, glorious display. Whilst they are germinating, your bulbs are waking up. When they are in full flower, when your Namakwalands are in full flower, this carpet of orange and peeping out through the carpet of orange are these most beautiful purple irises. Oh, that's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, so that's one combo. Highly recommended. Another combo that I love, love doing is this. Now, I'm sticking with the indigenous as well. And these are little bok bai fahis. Now, guys, bok bai fahis seed is like, <gasps> it's so small. It is crazy, crazy small. Um, take a look at the size of the seed. But I sow bok bai fahis every year. Every year we sow them in the hottest, driest, oh, 
20 minutes. I sow them in the hottest, driest spots in the garden because all I got to do is water them for the first 10 days for when they start germinating. After that, I leave them. They're on their own. Boy, treat them hard. Treat them bad. And they'll flower for you beautifully. But look how small the seed is. Mason, get in here. That's like, oh my goodness, where do I hold it to see them? It's like when the newspaper has to get further and further away from you. Look how small they are. But these little guys, oh, they are just too fabulous. Now remember, with small seed like this, really, really small seed, always, guys, always, in order to help your um, spreading of it and sowing of it, always mix it with a bit of stock is palm peat. Okay, remember that's your palm peat. Comes in this big block. Take a bit of that, pop it into a container. Okay, pop it into a container there. And then sprinkle your seeds. There we go. Mix it up. Now my seeds are all mixed in here. Way easier than trying to sow. It's much easier to sow this than to try and sow those little, little seeds. And like I'm all thumbs and then it's like a hundred seeds drop into one square centimeter. And life as we know it is over. Um, so I mix it in like this. Nice and simple. And then I just go and sow it because now the seed is mixed in here. So much easier, guys. So, so much easier. Try mm. that. It'll really, really help. Anyway, let's get back down to the bork by fakies. I would plant bork by fakies and beautiful little chinkery cheese. Okay, so chinkery cheese in, nice and tall. They get to about 40 centimeters. And then you've got this carpet whew, of this. And let me tell you, every gardener can get that look right over there. Okay, next up, next up on the chopping block. I have got these calendulas. Guys, and have a look. There's some calendulas. Come in close. Calendulas are beautiful. Um, easy to sow. They're big seed. They really are a big seed. So you can throw these quite happily, dig them in a little bit, um, give them a bit of water, and, and they will germinate nice and easily. Okay. Remember, calendulas are edible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Edible. You can turn white rice, white rice into... Uh, yellow rice, orange rice, by throwing in some petals, leaving it, putting it onto steam, and then so the yellow just comes out of it. Fantastic, the yellowy orange. But calendulas are beautiful. I would use a combination of the calendula seed with um, my beautiful Dutch irises. Fantastic. There are also other options. You can go ranuncula. Now remember, ranunculus are one of the oddities. They are one of the true oddities of bulbs because a ranuncular bulb, you plant, let me open it up here. Ranunculus, you plant claws down. Oh, it's an ugly looking thing. Uh, yeah, it is an ugly looking bulb. It's certainly not pretty. But a ranuncular bulb, you plant claws facing down. Okay, got it. There it is. Claws facing down. That's how you plant them. Also nice and tight together, so you get a really amazing display. Okay. Um, other ones that I would use that you could mix in here are your other indigenous bulbs, Spiraxis, Tritonias. Um, well, I've got Tritonias here. And Spiraxis, guys, they are indigenous bulbs. They are tough. They are easy. They are quick. And they really are a kaleidoscope of color. Um, Absolutely beautiful, a, a really, really beautiful kaleidoscope and incredibly tough. And they will come up for you next year and next year. You don't have to take them out as long as you remember where they are. Okay, so on top of that, I would recommend sowing some pansies or even planting some pansies. And I would definitely consider going with sweet peas. <gasps> so you've got sweet peas in amongst this. Can you imagine the look? Can you imagine the look? Sweet peas, the little dwarf sweet peas, even the climbers coming up in between your bulbs. So, guys, it, 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 there are so many different combinations. There honestly are. Um, it really is just up to you. The biggest, the most difficult hurdle that you've got to overcome is just getting out there and buying the things. Just get out there, buy them, let your imagination go wild. Um, so, um, what I want to show you very, very quickly is, is planting. Um, how do we plant these bulbs? And for that, I'm going to take you for a little wonder out into the garden. Um, we're going to show you how to plant them and a very cool gadget um, that I got my hands on. And I've used it. 
I've tried, and te- I've tried it out a few times and it really is fantastic and I'm very excited as to what I'm going to be planting because I know it's going to give me the look I want. Okay, and I'm going to be going with, where are they? My mixed, my mixed, 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 where are you? My mixed irises. Now they are, oh, here they are, here they are, here they are. So I've got my bulb planter, I've got my bulb food, I've got my sticks, and I have got my watering can. Let's go and have a look, guys. So let's take a little trot out into the garden. Look, it's cleared. It's cleared. The sky is blue. Wow. Wow. It's actually turned out to be a glorious day. Okay, come along with me. But I've, before I go to the bulbs, I want to show you what we planted a good few months ago. Um, of course, now we're at the end of summer. Um, and guys, they have just done so, so well. And you know, I've never really been a fan, but look at these dahlias. Those are the large cactus dahlia. Look how tall it is. I mean, that guy is probably just short of my shoulder height. Yeah, I can actually get in the garden bed and show you. Look at him. Look how tall he is. And look at the size of this flower. I mean, just, just look at it. This is the beautiful cactus dahlia. They're spectacular and they have just gone on and on and on. Lots of buds still coming. Um, the butterflies just love them. They strong stems. So I know I'm going to be planting more of these next season. So as soon as these start dying down, I'll be following the same principle of lifting into the brown bag and, and away we go. But they, they've been amazing, guys. Okay, Mason, you've got to back up because I need to jump across the, the lamb's ears here. Um, oh, there we go. Okay, let me go and show you where I'm going to be planting these. Um, so come along with me and uh, we're going to show you exactly where we're going to put these guys in. So um, these are some agapanthus which we, we lifted and divided in early March, okay, because it was the end of the season, that's the best time to lift once they'd finished their main flowering season. Um, so we divided them, they were way too full. You can see there's a lovely mulch used around them, a beautiful mulch chopped up branches and that from our shredder that has been used around them. Oh, look, I think we've got wildlife in the garden. Look at these. That is said dog. That is Bahari and Kalor, the dogs that we don't even own, that are now going through my garden. Look at that. It's like spoor of a lion or something. But anyway, guys, what we're going to show you today is, is very simply um, how to use the bulb planter. Now, bulb planters have been around for years, but these guys have had a bit of innovation, which I'm really chuffed about. Uh, what it does, it gives you your planting depth. So remember on the back of the packet of the bulb, it tells you how deep to plant them. There it is, five centimeters. Oh, look at that. There's five centimeters. Ooh, this couldn't be simpler, couldn't be easier. Okay, so what it is, is you stick it in, okay, you then wiggle it around, pull it out, and when you pull it out, you're bringing the soil out with it. So let's give it a bash. And my plan here is to put these beautiful irises in between. So we go in five centimeters, there we go, nice and easy. We pull it out, pull it out, okay, there it is, and Get the handle, do you see that? And then out comes the soil. So there I've got my holes. A word of warning guys, don't put one in and then plant. So don't make the hole and then plant because you're gonna forget. And then you're gonna be planting on top of another bulb. You know what I mean? So all you do is you've made the hole, drop your bulb into it, there it is. I've dropped my little iris into it. Nice and easy, leave it, don't cover it yet. Okay, let's go to another spot here. In here, in it goes, pull it out. Oh, the soil is so soft. Do you see that? There it is, the soil. How do we get it out? Nice and easy. Do you see how it opens up there? Okay, so especially if your ground is even a bit harder, you can really get this guy in. Okay, hole is dug. Oh, hello! Yoo-hoo! Oh, yeah, it's Harry. Larry. Um, okay, don't pretend that you're dead. You've still got work to do. Okay, off you. There we go. Look at it. Look at it. Okay, so pop my little bulb in, nice and easy. Let's do another one. Let's do one on the edge here so you can really see how it works. In it goes. I'm going to do this a bit deeper to show you how deep you can actually go. Do you see that? Out it comes. There's your soil. Okay. Grab the handle. 
open it, out comes the soil. Now, you don't have to let the soil out there, okay? But because I want you to rather make the holes first so that you can actually see where they're going, you need to do it this way. Get the soil out. But a lot of people just do it this way. So in goes the bulb, okay? Once it's in, you just take your soil that you had and you just cover your little bulb up, all right? Cover it up, give it a little pat. There we go, give it a little pat. So some people do it this way, and this is an option, you can do it this way. Just my preference to rather make all the holes first, put the bulbs in so I actually know where they are. You can simply do this, get it in, pull it out, okay? All my soil is in here, pop the bulb in, pop the bulb in, okay? And then, out it comes, and then you cover it. No mess, no fuss. Right, how on earth? Oh, look who's here. Come here, Bahari. Come here. Come here, guys. Hello. Hello, guys. Hello. Oh, here's the culprit. Are these your paws? Should we test it? I'm telling you. Oh, guys, are you thirsty? Uh, this is the culprit that runs through my garden and destroys it. Bahari. Okay, hello, Baba. Hello, guys. So how do you remember where... <laughs> I love these kids. How do you remember where your bulbs are? Because I forget. And I, I know you're going to forget too. I use little ice cream sticks or you can even use golf tees. And you just pop it into the ground. Okay, guys. Get your berm out the way there, my boy. Um, pop them in there. Gracie's got a sore leg. She was chasing monkeys and hurt her cruciate ligament. So she's wobbling around a bit. She's under strict house arrest. Okay, guys, out of the garden here for me, please, so mom can finish. All right. So once you've planted them, put the ice cream stick there. And then the most important part, remember, is feeding. Now, this is a slow-release bulb food. Guys, all you do is you take a little bit, sprinkle it where you planted the bulbs. Just sprinkle it. Okay, I had one over there. And that's why it's important to use these so you remember where they are. Sprinkle it on top, okay, wherever you planted the bulbs. Slow release bulb food going to give the right nurturing energy and then you give it a good water. And remember after this you're only going to water once a week. A good deep watering. So water it in nicely. There we go. And that is how easy or difficult it is to plant bulbs. Of course, it becomes even easier in pots, um, literally just your potting soil. Um, and in they go. Remember to always use your bulb food. And it really is an easy, easy task. I know that I've got all of these to plant a little bit later on. Um, so uh, I'm going to leave this right here. Um, I'm not leaving the bulbs here because I'd hate the kids to eat them. Um, but let's go inside and, uh, and let's finish off. And if you've got any questions, remember to send them to us, um, especially on the bulb planting, so that we can help you out. But hasn't it turned out to be a glorious day? Absolutely glorious. Okay, guys, up onto the veranda and uh, away we go. Radio. So there we have it. Um, that was bulb planting. Really nice and easy, guys. Remember, there are beautiful combinations of seeds that you can use with them to just enhance them. So if you are not planting in between plants, like I was there with the agapanthus, if you're planting into a pot, sow some seeds over them, okay, so that you've got the beautiful seeds germinating at the time whilst your bulbs are busy starting to shoot. All right, guys, um, let's have a look at, that's bulbs in a nutshell, okay. So remember, get out there um, and get them planted. Um, I've been told I must check on the queue, so let's have a look. There are a few questions. Uh, let's just get to it. Uh, let's have a look here. Right. Um, some of my bulbs like chinkery cheese. This is from um, uh, Miss Cheeky. Some of my bulbs like chinkery cheese, tritonia, grape hyacinths are showing sprouts mid-autumn. Is this okay? Um, or are they going to fail to bloom in spring? No, 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 no. You, it, remember, it takes quite a long time for them to send out their green shoots. So their leaves first need to develop first, become adult and mature before they're then going to flower. So don't stress out. They might flower a little early, okay? Um, and that is all dependent on temperature, which we can't really control. So the fact that they are already starting to sprout, that's nature, okay? Um, Lucilda asks... Um, 
uh, will the lasagna bowl planting method work in the northern parts of Pretoria? Yes, yes, lasagna planting is fabulous. Remember, what is lasagna planting? It's just like that. It's a bit of beautiful thick cheese sauce, yummy, a layer of lasagna. It's a layer of mince, you know, that's your lasagna. And basically you can plant bulbs like that too. So you can put your taller ones really deep down in the pot. So when you get your daffodils, pop those in there, or your irises. Then you go maybe with ranunculus, tritonias, ixias. Then at the top, you put your hyacinths. That's known as lasagna method. And what it is, they then push through and flower at different times and you get an absolute kaleidoscope of, of color. Yes, do it. It's so much fun. Um, Verna wants to know, I know you're talking about bulbs, but I have a question about sweet peas. First time I'm planting them, I stay in Gauteng, usually get black frost just before spring. Ooh, okay. Okay, so your sweet peas will be fine. Your sweet peas will be fine, but I want to help you along a bit. Um, where are my sweet peas? I've made such a holy mess here. When planting your sweet peas, what I suggest that you do always is take a little bowl, all right, with some water in it. Soak your sweet peas overnight. Empty the entire packet into this little bowl of water. Soak them overnight to just help them crack that little hard outer casing. Because it is a hard outer casing and it generally hampers their development, their early germination. Um, if you are worried, if you are worried about the black frost, then I would definitely suggest that you put them in pots. Okay, pots is a great method. And remember, you can grow tall sweet peas. So get a nice big pot, put three stakes in, and plant your sweet peas, and they'll find their way because plants have a way of finding the support. That's how nature works. They know where they are going, okay? So they will find a way to creep up them. Um, make a little teepee, tie it up with a bit of string, and uh, Bob's your uncle. Uh, my ranunculus corms are all rotting. Ugh. But are they in the ground, um, Bernadette? I'm a bit worried. Um, uh, have you planted them or haven't you? Okay, I'm going to answer both questions. Let's just work on a process of elimination here. If you have bought your bulbs and you have not yet planted them, and you're only planning on planting them, say, in two weeks' time, take your bulbs and store them in the veggie compartment of your fridge. Okay. Not with the rotting lettuce, okay? Choose a separate drawer. Keep them in there because it keeps the temperatures, the right temperatures to stop them from sprouting, okay? Very important. So keep them in the veggie compartment. That will stop any rotting, any fungal diseases. If they have started rotting and they are in the packet, eesh, compost, compost, compost. It's, it's no good planting because you're just going to be disappointed. Um, so rather do that. Uh, question from Janet. Can I transplant bulbs now? Move the pot. Move the pot and will be too hot. Mm, so if they're in and they've already got um, green shoots, no, negative. Leave them where they are because you're going to be disturbing the root system. Leave them where they are and rather do that next season. So, yeah, it's a bit of planning involved. Um, but always remember where you plant them. So use the ice cream stick or the golf tees. So, I, uh, yeah, Janet, I really wouldn't move um, those now because you really are just going to set them back and might even stop them from giving you potential flowers. Okay. Right, guys, that was bulbs in a nutshell. I forgot to mention Vata Blomikis. And, of course, everybody knows how to make a Vata Blomiki bready. You can grow them in a pot nice and easy. Guys, let's check up um, what are your jobs for the weekend coming up this week. Um, this weekend, besides, of course, going out and buying your bulbs, um, but from the Garden and Detainee magazines, let's take a look. what you've got planned for the weekend guys it's a good gardening time there's loads to do and in fact the days are beautiful 
to, to, the days are so, so beautiful. So get out there and enjoy it. Remember to please send in your entries for the Dirty Spade. Uh, don't worry, don't be nervous that you're going to get it wrong. Or, ooh, um, I might not be technically correct. <clears throat> Guys, come on, just put it out there. Send us your video. And I also want to see your faces. So, you know, turn that turn that, um, that, that uh, cell phone of yours so I can see who you are and what you look like. Um, introduce us to your pets. Um, and, uh, and yeah, let's get chatting, guys. Um, I would love to see your videos. Remember, any questions that we haven't answered today in the live will get answered in the next few hours um, on our Facebook page. Thank you to all of you who have joined us on YouTube and on Facebook. It really was a privilege spending the last hour with you. A big shout out to our sponsors, Gardena and Mayford. Thank you guys. Um, and get out there, get your seeds, get your bulbs and get your bulbs planter. Guys, that's all from me this week. Um, take care of yourselves, be safe. Um, I look forward to interacting with you and spending more time with you in the next few weeks. And remember to keep an eye out on the social media pages um, for our big Cape Town announcements. Mwah. God bless you all. And most importantly, happy gardening. Gardening with Tanya was proudly brought to you by Gardena. Realize your gardening dreams. Mayford. Grow your own spring flowers. And TanyaFisser.com for all your gardening goodies and supplies. Calling all green-fingered gurus and plant killers alike. We got you covered every month with gardening inspiration, hands-on practical advice and fun projects to do. From the latest in plant fashion, growing your own, whether to prune or not to prune, from cover to cover, the Gardener and Detainee magazines have got your back. Get your copy now or subscribe online at thegardener.co.za.